All right, guys, welcome back to the newest episode of Avillion and Brayden Talks. We got a lot, a lot planned. Some yeah, new so segments much. that we're going to be trying out. If you're watching this, let us know how you feel about them. But before we do anything, as always, I'm joined by my good friend Avillion Talks. Hello. Jacob, how you doing? <clears throat> I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, just had some McDonald's. I mean, uh... Uh, ambiguous golden arch uh, beverage here to my to my right. Um, What's in the cup? That's what I wanted to know. I wanted to wait to find out. So, you know, I always got the Dr. Pepper on hand. So I mm-hmm. feel like whenever I do get food, I don't necessarily need to get the Dr. Pepper. So uh, I got Coke. Mm, okay. I got Coke. I like me some Coke. Um, I mean, just regular. You know me. Mm-hmm. I keep that thing on. You keep that thing on you. Ooh. Mm. I'm, a, I'm gonna become very good at opening cans, like to please this the the listeners. Mm-hmm. I think in general, um, the Dr Pepper ASMR has become a staple. Oh yeah, of the show. I would I would have to say, it really is. <clears throat> Excuse me. How are you? So, I'm doing pretty solid. So one thing I've been doing is I'm like recently I've been like, I need to go out more. I need to get out of the house more. Right. So I've been doing that. Been like just going to some thrift stores, been going to Barnes and Noble. So a couple days ago, I got this bad boy here. This it says the Positive Planner, and it's a. Uh, there, there was like a couple of like activities that you do at the beginning, but then after that, it's it's a daily thing. Um, it's the daily intentions and then the evening reflections. So at the beginning of the day, you kind of talk about what you what you hope to do for the day. Let's okay. see. It says today's mantra, today's positive intentions, my top three to dos, today's self care moment, and a note to myself today is. And then for the evening, it's uh, how would I sum up today? What was my general mood? Three mm-hmm. things I did well today, and my gratitude moment. The idea of this planner is to even in bad days to try to focus on some of the more positive things, although while not outright ignoring the negative. Fair enough. So uh, it's been just been a couple days, but it's pretty solid. It's good. That sounds like a good deal. And then I got some other stuff that I might talk on when we talk about what we've been on. But since you asked how I'm doing, it felt appropriate to bring that book up now. I think so. Absolutely. But uh, I also went to Barnes & Noble again today. Originally, all I wanted to find was a um, like a creative like a creative writing prompt book. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find one there. But I did br- browse through the, the board and card game section. And we'll get into some of the other stuff I got today later. But I got some stuff for the pod. Some fun card things to bring out about. Maybe some slight discussions. But one of the things is going to become, maybe, we'll see You know how we like it, how we feel about it. But it could become a staple are these affirmation cards. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, kick-ass affirmations for women. Fuck yeah. This podcast is um, girl coded. This is we are certified women respecters. Uh, we are girl bosses, as proven. Uh, hey, a and I got ago. I got the girl bossiest boss. If we remember, you are damn right. So, but uh, let, let's let's just go ahead and let's see, let's see what this first card says. Uh, Without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. We can't be kind, true, merciful. Merciful, generous, or honest. Okay. Okay. I fucks with it. I I think yeah. I think ultimately I, I could agree with that. Mm-hmm. So you know we're just gonna you know maybe start the pot off with one of these. Uh, feel in touch with our inner girl boss. I am excited for the day where we debate one of the affirmations. That would be funny. It's like no, where, this is fucking dumb. This is just like nah, bitch. I'm ready. And that's that's not, when we I'm enter our manosphere we, pod. Yeah, uh, this is this is when we, why women deserve less. Now, what do you bring to the table? Yeah. Are, you're what a low value woman, and I'm a high value man. It's never gonna work. Right now, this never podcast work. is in its girl boss you era. You can't cook. You can't clean. You wanna go come come home to a mess and no food after a long day at work? I think I'm a high value man. I can't I can't live with that. I, we've talked about this before. Every grown adult. Needs to cook and clean. Those are two like adult them. skills. 
all of them. I'm so like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta get out of this. Mind. And thankfully, it is becoming an increasingly smaller minority of people. But we gotta get out of this mindset of, of, you gotta cook and I gotta do this. No, every, everybody should know how to should know how to pick up after themselves and make themselves dinner. Um, yeah, that don't always mean I want to do it. That's why I got McDonald's. But you know, doesn't mean I can't cook. Doesn't mean I can't throw it now. I mean, I could see two adults consenting to "I'll always cook if you always do this." As if it's built sure, upon respect. Sure, whatever. If there's a if there's a dynamic the, the, there, the that difference you've is together. when it's when it's like two adults agreeing to this. They they see the value that each person brings, and it's respectful. Versus mm-hmm. the idea of like every woman needs to do this. That's when it gets mm-hmm. when that when it's like that's their role, and it's a general broad statement across a a, a half of the population. That's when it's like, okay, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. But uh, out of the girl bossness and maybe into some more traditional, stereotypical man things, we're ball, we're ball lovers. We are certified ball lovers. Certified. And what we really love about ball, I personally, again, I've said it previously, my favorite television event of the year, nothing else compares, is the NFL draft. Mm. However, unfortunately... We are still 30 days away from this event happening. 30. Really? 30. I'm not a big fan of the government. However. <laughs> All right. My bad. Um, what's really cool is that we can we can, uh, we can can do our own. It's not real. So in fact, some would say it would be a, a mockery of the real thing. <laughs> um, but we can do a mock draft. We, and we are certified ball lovers. And, you know, um, between, you know, not having the games and whatnot, it does feel as though, you know, and I don't mind the, the pod being less ball centric now that we don't have much ball to be discussing. But it is it is mock draft season for sure at this point, given that free agency has officially died down. You'll see a couple more moves here and there, but nothing crazy. You still got guys like Justin Simmons available. For the most part, all the big fish have been caught. Um, nothing's really going to go on. So, and even though a lot of these guys are going to get signed after the draft, you're going to see a lot of guys not get signed until after mini camp because they don't want to do it. Um, but anywho, is my draft season. I am going to be drafting the odd picks, okay. and Braden is going to be drafting the even picks. Okay. So we got a fun one. We got a fun one. So let me just share my screen here. Yes, sir. Look at you go. Let me. I want to make that bigger on my screen just for yeah, fun. Yeah, one second. Actually, I'll figure fine. out the best way to do this. Okay. Make sure you are picking for all as well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I am, I am picking for all. Okay. Wonderful. All right. I am picking for all on my side of things as well here, just so I have the draft board Oops. in front of me. I'm not looking at your screen. Um, oh, every, so every time I click off it, it like, Oh yeah. I see what you're saying. My stream is still running. We pause the save. Yeah. It's still running. You're good. You're good. It hasn't. It hasn't gone anywhere. Okay. Well, because I, I stopped. I stopped seeing it on my screen. Okay. No, it's still there. Okay. Let me just move. It hasn't, this over. hasn't gone anywhere. Okay. As long as you can see it. Yeah. Which means the audience should be. Wait. No, if you can't see it, the audience can see it. I've switched it around now. Where like, it, it'll be fine. Even if I don't see it on Discord, okay. it, it's just gonna screen. It just the audience will no longer see us. Okay. We're no longer the tiny boxes at the bottom. They don't. They won't see us anymore. But we'll still see the mock draft. Tragic. You get tragic. Okay. We played it. All right. Okay. Um, it's the first pick. I'm not gonna get cutesy with this one. It's Caleb motherfucking Williams. Uh, but he paints his nails. Dub. <laughs> Move him up the board I, even further I, I than the I think I first. saw him have a pink phone case. Move him even further up the board. This is a certified girl-coded podcast. You think we're not taking the nail paint at number one overall? You're out your fucking mind. It's the same reason I think I can't wait for Jared McCain to come into the uh, the NBA. You're damn right. 
You're damn right. Let me tell you. All right. Something. One overall, Caleb Williams. Here we go. Light, lightweight baby. Okay. Washington Commanders at two. Mm-hmm. The obvious discussion here is between Drake May and Jaden Daniels. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I've seen some reports about JJ. Love JJ. That's, that's smoke screen. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's, love, I love JJ. JJ McCarthy. That's not happening. Yeah. That is not happening. Um, Adam Peters is not taking JJ McCarthy. That's a that's a smoke screen and a half. To me, I this is a coin flip. To me. Okay, that's fair. And I just I, I won't hate either direction that the team goes with. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna go with Drake May. I would do the same. Yeah. In this scenario. I think um he is firmly my QB two. Uh, I think I've said in the past he's my QB one. I think I've since moved Caleb back up. Okay. Um I'm not gonna overthink it at this point. Oh. Um no 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 I'm not gonna give into the prospect fatigue with Caleb. Um, which I do think a lot of that is what it is. It's a, it's a healthy combination of prospect fatigue and fragile masculinity. Why some people really just can't stand Caleb Williams. Um, I he's my number one. Uh, but May is his mom gonna I be would, there every game he loses for him to cry to? You're damn right. Like, you goddamn right. Oh no, my my franchise quarterback has a good relationship with his mother and loves the game so much. And loves the game of and is disappointed when he's knocked out of the playoffs and won't be able to win a, a natty in his final season. Yeah. What a, oh, man. What a bad, bad sign for a franchise quarterback. Yeah, I, I hate when my franchise quarterback has, has passion for the game. Oh, my God. Get a – Jesus fucking Christ. All right. But All now right. we are on the board Eddie. with pick number three, the New England Patriots. This, to me, is where – obviously, there's still there's some drama with number two. This, to me, is where the draft really starts because – Really? One and, two, one and two are quarterback. You know that for sure. Right. Three, this could be a quarterback. This could, this could be a wide receiver. This could be a trade down. I was about to say this. I I think the order goes quarterback, trade down, wide receiver. At least for what I think they should do. Fair enough. Um, New England's a tough one because they are almost certainly going to be picking in the top five again next year, regardless of what they do with this pick. Um, it just it's the team needs a lot of work. It just is what it is. They didn't spend much in free agency, so the roster has not gotten a whole lot better, if at all, and. The hang-up here is what quarterback are you taking next year if you don't take Jaden Daniels here? Because you can take Marvin Harrison Jr. right now, and you're not going to get a better wide receiver than Marvin Harrison Jr. next year. No. But you're sure as hell not getting a better quarterback than Jaden Daniels next year. Maybe, most likely. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I feel like Shidoran there's always at least like one player. quarterback who just shoots up like – not always. I mean, 2022, you had Kenny Pickett. Was about, he's been replaced after two seasons. I, I mean, like, I don't get that. Like, no, you definitely don't bank on up, that. Sometimes you'd like, now granted, Shadur Sanders is definitely a better quarterback than Kenny Pickett was. And I, like, I would say Shadur would quite easily be the first quarterback taken if he was, you know, somehow eligible back in 2022. But I'm going to, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Jaden Daniels here okay. because there will be wide receivers worth taking next year. One thing that might be worth noting. If you look up in the top right up when the, with the uh, next to team needs, it says remaining picks for the Patriots. Three. It says three. Oh, oh, oh no. Um, this is, this is just the first round lock. Cause for Arizona, it says four and 27. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, did, I thought it said they only had three picks. The rest. Of I the thought draft. that's what it meant too, but no, it's because okay. because we're, we're only mocking the first round. This is just what it. Okay. Uh, okay. That's, that's what it is. All right, Jaden Daniels. All right, number mm-hmm. four. Um. It's either Marvin Harrison Jr. Or a trade if a team got super aggressive. Arizona already has another first round pick, though, is the hang up there. Because I've heard Arizona trade back talks, but they already have another pick in the first round. I don't think they and, should trade back. I'm not going to have them trade back. But that, t- I mean, I could see that team. You, 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 you look at the wide receivers available. Mm-hmm. Like, if, let, let's say the Giants called. 
Because, like, multiple teams are calling. Giants are one of the teams trying to stop them from getting jumped over if they wanted okay. a quarterback, which is – I don't think would happen. Right. But I, I, I wouldn't rule it out either if they got high on, on a guy. But ultimately, it's Marvin Harrison Jr., and that is who I'm taking. I think, to me, it depends whether or not they would be really, really like, willing to move up or uh, move back with the Giants is how close their grades are for MHJ and neighbors. Yeah. Because supposedly, I don't know how true this is. This could just be smoke. Supposedly, there are, I mean, I'm sure there's at least a few. There are teams that have neighbors graded higher than Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't yeah. know if that's smoke. I don't know I, if that's I think prospect. that just comes down to, like, I think neighbors but, is slightly more explosive. And that's, if that's yeah, what you value. I would, I would agree there. And, like, Marv has a lot of strengths. And even that, he's not not explosive. It's just not like he's not like he's not a four three guy. He's, he runs on the four fours, and that's okay. Like especially for a guy with his skill set, like he does not need to be, you know, running twenty three miles an hour. You know, twenty one will do just fine. Um, and even then, I don't even know if Neighbors is necessarily the most explosive. Why his teammates probably a little like Brian Thomas Jr. is probably a little more explosive than he is. But Neighbors probably has a more complete skill set than than Thomas. I yes. think Thomas is definitely a pure Z receiver where it could develop into an X, but Currently a Z, whereas I think Neighbors is an X. Uh, but anywho, like I was saying, with um, with the Cardinals' willingness to move back, because obviously the Giants move up to four, it's for JJ. So the question is, what grade do the Cardinals have on MSJ and Neighbors, and also what grade do the Chargers have on MSJ and Neighbors? You know, who would they pick? And and because more than likely it's going to be wide receiver, and I'll just not going to waste time on it. I'm taking Malik Neighbors here at number five. You don't want to trade uh, back. Oh, I don't have trade options. Well, I do, and we're well, we're, Brad, see, well, we're seeing my screen. If you wanted to do that, I suppose, and then I'll just pick the player here. That, yeah, I'll just okay. I'll just, well, this is this to me feels like a pretty obvious Vikings trade up in real life. Um, this, if they're going to move up, I think this is where it is, and it's going to be some combination of eleven and twenty three, and then probably a day three pick, whether it be next year or this year. Um, I'm going to say try try a fifth rounder. I'm just Thank gonna you. do eleven twenty three, and if it goes through, that's because that's all we got. That's all we need to care about for this. Yeah. I mean, you could always force the trade. But, oh, trade accepted. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, they would definitely get both first round picks in this scenario. I feel. Yeah, so, and that's that the entire sense. reason that Minnesota would do that trade yeah. to trade for that additional first. And because right is, now, this point in the year, you would have discussions yeah. on what it would take to trade up with teams. And then if a yeah. player falls that you actually see them fall there, you pull the trigger. The only reason yeah. you would do this now is yeah. to, well, it's just like when the 49ers traded up to number three and when the jets traded up to number three, Yeah. Um, like when the jets were very clearly gunning for Sam Darnold and when the Niners were gunning for Trey Lance, like it obviously didn't work out for either franchise. Hopefully the JJ McCarthy pick works out better for Minnesota. And in this instance, it is JJ McCarthy. Um, I do feel pretty confident in that. Yeah. JJ. All right, JJ at five. I yes. guess I guess for yours, you could just draft the player that you're that's getting taken there, even if it looks weird. Right, that's what I did, and then right. I'm just for for you know eleven, I'm gonna take whatever the Chargers end up taking. Well, this uh, for you. you know no quarterback for the uh, for the Giants, which they have one of they already have their guy Drew Lock. Let's go. I I mean you know how I feel about Drew Lock. I would say hey, give my boy a chance. About Drew Lock, I mean, he's probably better than Daniel Jones. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. I, I hated that I saw him sign with the Giants because I was like, fuck, I like him. Don't play for a team in my division, just because I like right. you, not because I'm I'm not scared of Drew Lock. I mean he's not that level to me, but I do like him a lot. But no quarterback. But this still ultimately ends up working out very well for the Giants because Malik Neighbors is right there. This is an easy pick for me because wide receiver for I the agree. past. I agree. As much as we've been hard on Daniel Jones, at the same time, who is he throwing to? Their, their biggest acquisition was Darren Waller. Well, and see this this is why this is why teams need to do what Tennessee is doing this offseason and just give your quarterback as much help as possible as soon as possible. Because now you're now you now you're entering year six of the Daniel Jones experiment. You still don't know what the fuck he is because you haven't put a supporting cast around him to accurately gauge. Now I still don't think he's good, but the reason I could see him so being long. middle of the pack, like I don't know, like a starter that 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 you don't lose because of, but maybe not necessarily win because of. I that's his ceiling, 
to me. I don't think he's ever better than that. I don't think he's ever better than like maybe what Tannehill was for the Titans or whatever. I I, I hate using that comparison every time we we talk about like oh middle of the pack like I will we'll win you some, we'll never lose you some, but won't be the reason you like. But that's that's like the textbook example. Um, but anywho, like yeah, that like comparison though. You shouldn't you shouldn't be entering year six going oh we don't quite know what Daniel Jones is yet you should know at this point because you should have drafted better offensive linemen you should have drafted better wide receivers this shouldn't be a position that you're in well granted and I mean at least for the offensive line part they one took a year but then was amazing and then the other one you drafted high everyone thought yeah. it was you took them well, about yeah, I liked Evan expected. Neal I liked Evan Neal it just hasn't worked out it's yeah. not necessarily the Giants' fault and I, I like Andrew Thomas a lot I think he's fantastic yeah, but he's... um but how many wide receivers have they tried? Wandale Robinson yeah, and Jalen Hyatt. Problem neither was. of which I was a big fan of. What wide receivers have they signed? Well, they who, traded for Darren Waller last last season. I am forgetting his name. Who who was like the ultimate like Kenny Galladay? Okay, yes. I remember. They yes. tried with Kenny Galladay too, so they they have tried a little bit. It's almost like, like right um, method, but just yeah. it's just not working out. You are locking in neighbors, correct? Yes, neighbors at six for yes. sure. Okay, so I, I mean the process hasn't been abysmal, but I still I don't feel like no, they it hasn't been hard. On the, they, they didn't they didn't commit hard. Like Tennessee in one offseason has signed Lloyd Cushenberry, signed Calvin Ridley, um, about to draft. I, I'm just gonna say it right now, the seventh overall pick. This is Joe Alt. Lock that shit in. I'm not even gonna waste time with this one. Um, about probably about to draft Joe Alt. Like in one offseason, this team is like they've got DeAndre Hopkins who they signed last season. Um, they signed Tony Pollard to pair with when they drafted Ty J Spears last season. They drafted Peter Skaronsky last season. Like, well, f- f- in the Dayball era, have they had the cap space in a season that the Titans had this season? I, don't, not I doubt it. But, but I mean, whose fault? Like, like they they fucked up their. Well, cap that's the Giants too. as ov- as oh, overall right. from previous no, that's years. Not Dayball, that's not Dayball's fault, obviously. But I'm just saying, like, in the Daniel Jones era, it has been some hilarious mismanagement and. Now you're entering year six and you still don't know what your quarterback is because you have failed to put enough pieces around him to where you feel like you can accurately gauge him. And like, it shouldn't take you six years to figure out how good your quarterback is. It should take you three at most. It's only going to take Tennessee too. If Levis fails this year, it's pretty obvious he's the problem. Mm -hmm. So not that everybody needs to figure it out by year two, but like it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take you six years. It should take you three. Three years is the shelf life. So is, is there anything you wanted to say on the Joe Alt selection, or is this just so obvious um, you don't even need to? It is, but I mean, like, I don't know. Go ahead and hand the Lombardi to Nashville at this, at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like, um, you know, not quite the pass protector that Olu is, not quite the run blocker that Fuaga is, but in terms of all-around tackle, he's pretty clearly the best one. Uh, I don't think Bill Callahan's going to have any issues coaching him up even further. Uh, he's got plenty of tools. He's not like the biggest freak ever, but he is six foot eight and moves very well for his size. So, I'm I'm not worried about it. He is a mountain of a man. He moves well. He blocks well, both you know pass protection and run blocking. Like I, this is a franchise left tackle. This is a plug and play. Yep, ten years of premium left tackle play. Probably gonna have like four or five Pro Bowls thrown in there. Like, yep, yep. Next, like. This is a guy that goes top five in any other year that doesn't have this many blue chip prospects in it. So the fact that you can get a guy as good as Alt at seven, yeah, lock that in. Don't even think twice about it. That's a franchise left tackle. Yeah. And then we move on to the Falcons. This is a fun one. See, this is an interesting one. Okay. Because I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of the mindset. Of, of a team and it's kind of tough because this is this is new head coach mm-hmm. new vibe yes new quarterback do they say fuck it and give him another weapon to work with or do they or does the defensive coach say give me some firepower to work on that side and they had a great defense or at least a pretty good defense last year yeah so <sighs> i will say there are Two holes in particular on this defense that I feel. Uh oh. That you feel what? Uh oh. Nope. Oh. You're frozen. There You're you frozen are. for a second. Are we back? Yeah. Okay, we're back. Yeah. Okay. I guess I guess we both froze for each other. 
and it froze again. There you are. Not ideal. It's freezing again. Yeah, it froze for me too. Um, what I was saying is they have two specific holes on defense that I, I think are likely likely fills here. Um, I'll let you do your thing, but I like personally. I think I mostly two spots. I'm. I'm if you want, you can go ahead and say them because I, I I'm not watching Falcons game. I wasn't watching Falcon games last year, okay. so I don't know what they are. I. Is it the corner? Is I'm it thinking, the corner? It could be. I think. I think you, you could very well take corner here and give AJ Torelli two a true CB two, and then also um, this team has really, uh, really struggled the last several years to get pressure off the edge, mm. and they've tried with Arnold Epicady, and that's just not enough. And like to me, my dream fit here is Dallas Turner out of Alabama, that would be... Yeah. That's who I would lean most towards, personally. This is your pick. Do what you want to do. That is... If I was taking an edge... The guy in my head can, and I mock most often to the Falcons is Dallas Turner. For me, if he... If he... I guess guess I'd have to say, my understanding of Laiatu Latu Mm -hmm. is that he seems like he's good to go. It seems like he's been passing medical and to me it's like a yes or no for the medical if the if it if it's yeah. yes he could play i think you i think he could be edge one yeah yeah i'm with you so if if he clears your medical and he's your edge one uh, that's who i would take yeah oh well i mean go ahead and take lot lot a great player well i'm i'm i don't know see this is this is mm, this is tough who who's the wide receiver two there um because Drake London's the one. Johnu at tight end. Bijan at running back. Well, Johnu is not the starter. Not Johnu. Pitts is the starter. Pitts. <laughs> Sorry, other <laughs> underwhelming. Johnu left. Tight end. I think. Johnu's yeah, he's with uh, Miami now. Right? Or no, he's in Miami. That's right. Um, other who underwhelming is the tight end. Two. Let me let me Google this. I think they signed Darnell Mooney, but I don't know if he's a wide receiver. Oh, no, they did. They did. Yeah, yeah. He would be. He would be wide receiver too. They did sign Darnell Mooney. Um, oh, and they traded for Rondell Moore. They did trade for Rondell Moore. That's right. I remember that too. So they got three guys. Now I'm not like the biggest Rondell Moore guy ever, but like you can really do a lot worse than Drake London, Darnell Mooney, and Rondell Moore as your trio. Um, and if you're drafting Odunze, you're basically just drafting a more fluid Drake London. He's a very That's what I was thinking. I, I was kind of thinking, I was like, even though he's the best wide receiver available, the he skill a, set doesn't complement the current roster. He is a more well. athletic Drake London. That's pretty much what it is. And they're not like one-to-one, but like he's faster. He's a little more fluid. And London's fluid for his skill set. Give me Latu. Like, we're, we're, right? we're, I'm locking in Latu. Okay. I think that's, that's, a good, that's a good pick. That's a fair pick. I'm, I'd, I'd be good with Latu there. Um, this feels like a no-brainer. The Bears are taking Roma Dunze if he's still here at nine. They are not only are they taking, they are sprinting to the podium. Yes, to take Odunze at nine. That's just how the board fell. Like, it, there's a chance he could go. Like Tennessee could take him at seven, but signing Ridley does give does really make it seem like left tackle is the I most likely option. Would love that pick for the Bears so much. I yeah, this is like you you've won the draft already with Caleb Williams and Roma Dunze. Like getting them. In together is such a recipe for success. Yeah. Rookies spend so much more time together in these training camps. Yeah. Like him having him off rip. Yeah. The chemistry he could have with Roma Dunze from early on. A wide receiver course, you've got, trio. You've got DJ Moore already there. Keenan Allen. Um, yeah. <laughs> D- that's disgusting. Gracious. That's, yeah, that's filthy. That's filthy. And not to mention, um, Odunze with the kind of skill set that he has, like, Allen would be a good receiver for him to learn from. I like just with Allen being a like route running specialist and with not Odunze is not a weak route runner, but it's not his strength necessarily. Mm-hmm. And I, I think Allen is like the perfect mentor for him. And yeah, that is a disgusting trio. Um, yeah, you've got you've got um, I mean, Allen lined up in the slot. You got you got more in Odunze on the outside. Cole Komet's grown a lot as a receiver um 
I wouldn't hate Brock Roshan Bowers. Roshan Johnson here. RB1. I love Roshan Johnson. Uh, Khalil Herbert as well. I'm a big fan of. Uh, DeAndre Swift, stinky. I hate that signing. It's one of my least favorite signings. Everyone yeah. loved it. And I was like, guys, he's fine. He's bad. I was like, one, some of the worst vision you'll have. Like, he's got like Trent Richardson vision. It's disgusting. Uh, did they not learn from like Miles Sanders signing after when he signed away from the Eagles? Oh my goodness! I mean, get me started on Miles. You know, the Carolina Panthers are not a serious organization. Anywho, uh, the only like there's a couple of the guys you could consider here. You could consider going. Um, you still talking about the, uh, the Bears somewhere? If you're the Bears, yeah, like you could you could consider Byron Murphy uh, from out of Texas. I I'd like that pick a lot if they did. Brock Bowers, I feel like, would give you a true, like, receiving tight end. Cole Komet can What's catch. What's Brock Bowers' ceiling, pick-wise? Like, where's the highest he could yeah. get drafted? Five? Absolute <sighs> highest. If Chargers don't trade back, yeah, but I'd, like, even then, like, Jim Harbaugh is much more of, like, a beat him up like, let's run the ball kind of head coach. And Bowers is a fine blocker. He's not like George Kittle. You know what I mean? In fact, as a player, he really he is a lot like Kittle without the blocking ability. Um, you know, so like, I I don't I don't think Tennessee's realistic. I I like I know that's where Brock said he wants to play. I I don't think Tennessee wants Brock not at seven, not when not when left tackle is glaring. Of the if y'all took him and Joe Walt was on the board, how how are you? I mean, how do you justify that? What are you doing? You specifically? Uh, I don't know. Group suicide at my place like that's a joke that's a joke that's a joke hey, uh, hey, hey i'm kidding hey, hey, don't, hey. um i mean i like i it, it's another weapon you know like it's another guy who is really really good at what he does but and, and like you know the the brian callahan scheme whatever it is a quick timing passing game offense so um you know like offensive line like you don't necessarily need a top five pass protecting unit but ideally just take the franchise left tackle and don't even worry about you know potentially you know getting levis hurt once again because he did get injured twice against the same team for the same reason texans pass rush was just way better than the titans offensive line even even if the ball is going to be getting out quicker in this new scheme don't worry about it like just, just take the left tackle, man. Just take the left tackle. Um, but it is your turn, sir. The Jets are on the clock. And uh, what are we looking at here? Um, hmm, what are we looking at? There, there's a couple ways you could go. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if I take a wide receiver here. I know they just took they, – they, they made moves to address some of their bigger needs that it's like we could still draft that position with our first-round pick. But it doesn't make us forced to. Oh, with, and they with Ty- signed Mike Williams as Mike well. Williams and Ty- that's the move I'm talking about. Mike Williams yeah. and Tyron Smith. It's like, okay, for the upcoming year, which is the only thing this staff cares about, because if this year goes bad, they're gone. I think that's fair. So I it, think it, this is... it still allows them to take a wide receiver. Mike Williams doesn't stop them. It's a one year deal. It still yeah. allows them to take a tackle. Tyron Smith, I think it also might be a one year deal. It is, and not to mention, Tyron Smith is going to miss five games at least. You can pencil that in right away. Um, so whatever tackle, if they end up drafting a tackle 10th overall, he's going to play. He's going to play at some point in year one. Tyron Smith is not playing 17 games. There's no shit. There's no or no shot. No chance in hell Tyron Smith is playing all But games. even with that in mind, it still allows them to do best player available. And Aaron Rodgers could always use another weapon. Could always use another weapon. I think this is where... So I don't love this pick. Mm-hmm. But I do think this is where... I think this organization is right now. It's like, make Aaron Rodgers happy. Give him the best tools to succeed. We we, we addressed the offensive line already at, in mm-hmm. one way. You can still address it later on in the draft. You can still do other things. Let's get him Brock Bowers. I think it's a deep enough tackle class where you can take one on day two and not feel upset, especially when you already have Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith as your stop caps for this season. I, I, I'm with you here. I think this staff is fully committed to win as many games as we can right now because uh, we're fucked if we don't. Yeah. So it's time. But now the Chargers are finally on the board once again. 
Excuse me. This is a team with a mountain of needs. Yep. A mountain of holes. Could uh, could do a lot with them here. And I actually forgot it was my turn for a second. I'll be totally honest with you. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's not looking it's not looking great uh, for the short term for the Chargers, which is why the trade back is is in play for them Very specifically. Much. Especially and, with how deep the wide receiver class is. Yeah. They're, they and, need to take multiple swings at that position. And the class is very deep for it. And I don't think there's a wide receiver quite good enough for me to reach at 11. I love Brian Thomas Jr. I love Adonai Mitchell. Hell, I love Lad McConkey. I'm yeah. a huge Lad McConkey guy, coldest white boy in the draft. Um, hey, man, Ricky Pearsall. We got two cold white boys in the draft at wide receiver. But – um, you could really go just about anywhere mm -hmm. and feel pretty good about this. I, I think at some point, shoot, man. I mean, I'm I'm looking at Fuaga, who I could they could they could play at tackle or they it's could. It's funny, slide I the just guard. mouthed that right now. You weren't Fuaga looking, but I mouthed Fuaga. Guard. I mean, like, I would love Fuaga here. I think it would make perfect sense. Um. But I, mean, I you, am going. You know, Harbaugh is going to want to run that ball. And, oh man, that's a good. And nobody has better run block and tape in this class than Fuaga. Mm -hmm. Fuaga is the best run blocker in this draft class, regardless of position, regardless of side of the line, regardless of position. Nobody blocks the run better than Fuaga. Um, like, and he does have tackle and guard flexible. He projects better as a guard for the most part. Like he played much guard. I'm going with Fuaga. Yep. You, you, you sold me on – you're right. Harbaugh wants to run the ball. Harbaugh this is, is going to be running that ball. Yep. And when he takes Blake Corm top of the second round. <laughs> Nobody will be surprised. No. <laughs> because it's going to happen. Pick 12. Now, this is where we could see our first, like, reach. Mm. What do the Broncos need? Do you know who their QB1 is right now? It's got to be Bo Nix. Caleb Williams would be available, and Sean Payton would still want Bo Nix. Like, th that is Sean Payton's <laughs> yeah. guy. Uh, Jared Stidham right now, I believe, is the QB1 in Denver. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant, like, on their draft board. I'm like, it, oh. doesn't matter who's, it doesn't matter who's available. Oh. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I'm looking. You, you could see an edge rusher go here. This could be this could be Quinion Mitchell. This could be Dallas Turner. This could be Jared Verse. Um I want to say they are a team that could trade back, but I don't know who would who would come up for what player at this point. I like twelve is a weird spot to try to trade back. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, you got a few different options you can go with here if you want to reach on a quarterback, which is did, which is what I'm going to do. I think it's Bo Nix time. I think it's Bo Nix time. I think. I think. I think I, Sean, Sean Payton's Sean? got a man crush on this on this guy. Probably, I, I'm taking Bo Nix. And if it wasn't Bo Nix, the Sean Payton man crush at quarterback uh, in this draft class, probably Austin Reed. If I had to guess, probably Austin Reed because his uh, his his combine was pretty ridiculous. Like Sean Payton does love his his athletic quarterbacks. Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a thing. Which is so. funny because the one he's had the most success with, yeah, pure pocket passer. Yeah. So, but anywho, yeah, it's Bo Nix. And, like, I don't feel terrible about Bo Nix just in in, uh, in a vacuum. I just, I don't. Is he going to be a much better pro than Kenny Pickett was? I don't know. With Sean Payton, yeah. I suppose you're comparing, like, Sean Payton to um, Matt Canada. Yeah, like, yeah, you're probably going to have a little more success under Sean Payton. But look, we'll see. in my we'll mind, see. maybe not where every team is currently slated, they would take them there. But yeah. I feel like there should be like six quarterbacks, seven quarterbacks, probably just six quarterbacks going in the first round. If you don't have, there's too many teams with a quarterback that I'm like, do you really trust them? Yeah, that need to be drafting one. Like, and it'd be taking hail mary type shots at quarterbacks. Yeah. You That's get the fifth-year option, which I think is super valuable at a quarterback. Um, if your quarterback's good, yeah. 
Well, yeah. But that's what yeah. you, I mean. You just you have to take the shot. Yeah. No, I get it. I'm like, fuck it. Like, have a team trade back at the end of the at the end of this this round to take uh, Michael Penix. Just if you don't have a top guy, keep taking shots on guys. Fair enough. So. But now we got to Raiders. The now this this I would have ran Byron Murphy to the podium if they didn't sign Christian Wilkins, but they did, which gives you a little more flexibility here at this pick, and. I think at some point the corner dominoes have to start falling. I think we're going to see a run on corners at around this point in the draft. And uh, I'm going to go with Quinion Mitchell, who I think mm. between the combine and uh, uh, the senior bowl has, if he's not number one on, like, I think he's probably number one on at least half the league's board at this point. Uh, there's going to be some teams that prefer Nate Wiggins. There's going to be some teams that prefer Taron Arnold. But – Generally, I, I think Mitchell is probably the consensus CB1 at this point in the process. And I think he deserves it. I mean, at every opportunity, he's proven he can. He, he's that guy. Like, shut down the competition in college, looked just as good against, like, the detractable prospects in the Senior Bowl, uh, lit up the combine. Like, he's, he's that guy. So I don't see an issue with this at all. I think Quinton Mitchell deserves to be the first corner off the board, and I think 13 is already starting to see a little bit too much of a slip. I'm going to take him here at 13. All right. Now, a team I don't even – Saints. Um, What are we we thinking here? I'm thinking either Byron Murphy or Brian Thomas, Jr., Mm. And I would, I would personally probably go Byron Murphy, um, put him next to um, uh, Brissy, and then you've now built yourself somewhat of an interior defensive line because they've been lacking in that department for the last few years now. What does the tackle situation look like for the Saints? Um, now, see, the, no. oh, wait a minute, hang on. Olu Fashanu and Tr- uh, Troy Fautanu are still available. That's why. That's why. And I'm... Trevor Pending is t- now. If you want to go basically the anti-Trevor Penning route, this might be a team that, like, course corrects to the other direction, and they're like, okay, Trevor Penning, we drafted the Mahler who can't pass protect, and uh, he never learned how to pass protect. We're going to take Olu Fashanu. I think that would make a lot of sense. If Olu is still here at 14, actually, I have a hard time believing New Orleans doesn't pick him. That's what I was thinking. That's why I asked. I think, I think yeah. I, I, now, now I'm looking down the board, and I see Olu still there. And really, he's fallen. Yeah, a lot. that's what I, I was going to say. I don't think that's deserved, to be quite honest with you. I think the like, yes, not a great run blocker, and also the fact that he didn't really improve a ton in the last year when he could he would have been a top five pick last year had he declared, but he didn't, and now he's going to slide further than expected. Uh, still going to be a top, I think I think top sixteen pick. I don't think he falls out of the top half, but yeah, uh, I, I'm going fashion new here. Okay. Oh, that, that's how you say it. Okay, I, I forgot they did was um, a lot of these tackles actually like the name pronunciations were com- different than what you typically hear from the announcers. Now, your favorite uh, team, the my Indianapolis favorite team, Colts. the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I'm locking this one in pretty early. This is Cooper the Gene. Oh, my um, White King. Yep. I, I look. It pains me to give the Colts the. Well, I'll say Cooper DeGene is probably the coldest white boy in the draft, but I mean, Lad McConkey and Ricky Pearsall, two other cold, but definitely coldest white DB we've seen in probably a couple decades now. I'm about to say well, my lifetime. Harrison Smith is probably the coldest white DB we've seen, but fair coldest white boy who could start at outside corner and make a living. Yeah, Cooper. I, I really hope he stays out there just for the culture. Just for the culture. Yeah, leave him out. Um, this is step one. To making the Seattle. Jim Crow Bowl a real game. <laughs> I could see Seattle being a sneaky trade back team, but only a handful of spots because like this would interior be a team... offensive line is such a glaring need for them. Yeah. Like just gaping hole. Some good offensive linemen available here. Yeah, you have but... you have Jackson Powers Johnson. You have Graham Barton. Um if Fuaga was still here, you could consider Fuaga because and slide him to guard. Um, Latham, I know some people think Latham projects better as a guard. I've heard that. And not only that, Abraham Lucas has had some injuries. So you're, if Abraham Lucas continues to not be healthy, 
you've now got right tackle insurance, which is what Latham played in college. So I think I think Jackson Powers, Johnson, J.C. Latham, and Graham Barton are all good choices here um, for for Seattle if they stay at sixteen. That's probably where my head's at. See, so so are we going? Are we logging that in? That's that's up to you, man. Is your pick? Oh yeah, sixteen. Yeah. I don't know why I was just like, yeah, go off, Jacob. Yeah. Well, well, well what do you call? It? That's how I felt with the Chargers pick. I was like, oh wait a minute, this one's mine. Uh, <laughs> um. Um. Yeah. yeah, I probably would. I think I would probably go. I'd. Um, Do I is? You got a few guys to choose from here. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm le- got... so I'm 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 going back and forth between saying "fuck it, this is what we need" and taking Jackson Powers Johnson, or well, hold that thought because Graham Barton actually has played center, guard, and tackle. Graham Barton can play any position on the offensive line. In fact, he actually started his career at center. So if they really want a center. There's no shame in taking Graham Barton. Uh, I know some people who have higher grades on Barton than Powers Johnson. Personally, I think if you're taking a guy with the intention of him being a center, I would take Jackson Powers Johnson because I think he is the best center in this class. But if you're taking just interior offensive line in general, it's Graham Barton just as good of a guard as Jackson Powers Johnson as a center, probably. And he does have that center flexibility as well. So it all depends on maybe Seattle because they need both. They just take Barton and try to line him up wherever that their best offensive line combination is. And again, if for whatever reason if Abraham Lucas goes down, you at the very least have tackle flexibility with Grant Barton. So I don't know. I like Barton is probably my favorite choice here, just because I'm going between he, Jackson Powers Johnson, J.C. Latham, and Grant Barton. Yeah. Is, yeah. But is that's that's my argument as defense attorney for Grant Barton. Would would a team at sixteen? draft a center because i feel like that's a position that gets a little disrespected in terms of value uh at 16 maybe not quite but also jackson powers johnson's really fucking good so what did linderbaum where did he where did he get drafted he went um, i don't know why i'm thinking that late teens early 20s i think to baltimore but i mean um if you're drafting a guy with the intention of him being a center but i mean graham barton could be drafted with the intention of him being a guard And then, I mean, who knows? Maybe they really fallen out of love with Abraham Lucas with the injuries. I don't know. Um, let's see. Linderbaum went twenty oh, fifth. If Linderbaum went twenty fifth, I just have a hard time seeing Jackson Powers Johnson going sixteen. Okay, that's fair. Um, let's go. But is you know what? But is Seattle a team that's going to care? I mean, they could take Dallas Turner for all we know, because quite frankly, Turner at sixteen, the value started to look really fucking good. That's a great point. Uh, they did just get a defensive head coach or Jared Verse as well. I mean, if um, but I mean, Mike McDonald does love athletes. At, at well, from what we saw in Baltimore, anyways, and there are a few athletes better than what Dallas Turner is. So then let's go. Let's go, Dallas Turner. Let's the Dallas Turner fall stops now. Dallas uh, Turner sixteen. I am once again drafting for my favorite team. It's Jacksonville, and well, let's Chip see. Murphy's still on the board. I wouldn't take him here. Oh, here I drafted from. I'm drafting from my whole division too. What do you know? <sighs> let's see. I Jacksonville. I feel. It's not showing up as a well. DB shows up as a need, but I, I, I it doesn't say corner outright. But I personally think corner is a pretty gaping hole um, next to um, what's his name? Why am I blanking on? Uh, I'm trying to remember who they have. Stokes, Campbell, Campbell. Yes, Campbell. That's who I'm thinking of. Uh, Tyson Campbell, um, good CB one. I think. I'm gonna go Nate Wiggins. Nate Wiggins. Nate Wiggins. Uh, I, I, have, I have a higher grade on Terry and Arnold, but I'm just going based on pure vibes here. I don't know. I feel like the Jaguars would prefer Wiggins. I have no. I have nothing to back that up with. 
All that's right. just pure. That's pure vibes. My favorite team this year, the team that I will be watching for this year, the team that will crumble without Brian Callahan at the helm. We'll see. Um, the Bengals. Um. I don't know about you. I would I would run this one to the podium at this point. Byron Murphy. I was th- I was thinking that. Oh, I was I was actually thinking of Marius Mims. Really? I think PFF's a lot lower on him than the league is. I think the team, the especially the mid teens, where we could start seeing a Marius Mims go. But I think the high a Marius Mims could be this year's. Um, fuck, how do I forget his name? He played for my favorite team, uh, Darnell Wright. This is Marius Mims could be this year's Darnell Wright, where we see a guy go tenth overall. We don't really expect mm. that right tackle. Um, and the Bengals certainly need a right tackle. This could be Latham. This could be Mims. Um, Which tackle has the highest upside? Mims. Mims. I would say Mims. Yeah. Because Mims is my, my pick. Because he Sorry. could he could not play this year. It's possible. So they, there could be a mindset of because. Who did they sign to be their right tackle this year? Something Brown? Um, Trent Brown? Did they sign Trent Brown? So Yeah. They, they I signed – I think it was somebody Brown. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody's last name Brown. Okay. I thought Trent Brown was still available, but maybe not. Maybe the Bengals did get him. And if so, you don't necessarily need to go Mims here. Uh, you could just run Byron Murphy to the podium yeah, because you did lose uh, DJ Reader. Yeah, so he signed so, with the Bengals, but if it's a one-year contract... Yeah, then this could be a Marius Mims sit for... Because a Marius Mims is a very inexperienced tackle. Uh, did not get a whole... He's like the uh, the Adani Mitchell of tackles, where you're just assuming he's going to be a better pro than he was. Funny enough, both Georgia players, because Mitchell was um, at Georgia before Texas, uh, where you're just kind of assuming he's going to be better in the NFL than he was in college, and that he's going to play more, because he projects that way. But there is a bust factor with Mims. I've made my mind up. Okay. I think the Bengals have put themselves in a really good position to go best player available. I'm okay. going to go Byron Murphy. Yeah, I, that's fair. Especially it's kind of a bounce back year. Is this it team making a selection in the first round of the draft? I can't believe it. Les Snead, are you insane? Perhaps? Maybe. This is their first first round pick since like 2016. Um. Yeah, it, it's been shit. Has it really been that long? Let me Google it while you while you uh... was it was Jared Goff the last player that took in the first round? I feel like there has to be one more. I don't know. Well, I... the last time the Rams made a first round pick, it ended up being Jared Goff. Wow, wow, it has been. That That's long. crazy. Imagine they trade out. That would be. I mean, that would, shit. That'd be hilarious. They trade them for players, though. Yeah, typically. Um, with the retirement of Aaron Donald, you almost kind of want to like just run Johnny Newton straight to the podium and be like, "All right, here we go. This is our Aaron Donald replacement." Uh, Which would be. But so, having, I would hate that for him. Having Kobe Turner on the well, technically the Aaron Donald replacement is Kobe Turner because you saw what he did last year as a like as a pass rusher. Like, that is the Aaron Donald of the future for that. This kid so, will still only be told he's Aaron Donald's replacement. Better live up to it. I, I suppose, but I think, like, technically this is Kobe Turner's replacement and Kobe Turner's Aaron. If you draft Johnny Newton here, um, which they could very well do. Um, at this Their point. defense um, needs help regardless. Yeah, especially when you lose a coach like Raheem Morris. You could use a, a few more players. She's a to, coach like Raheem Morris, a player like Aaron Donald. Give those this boys be, some help. This could be Terry and Arnold. This could be... I, I feel like Troy Fautanu is already falling a lot further than he should. Like This is a guy you'd think would have gone a lot higher at this point. Um, I... I... I'm going to take Johnny Newton here. All right. And... Um, I'll you figure out... What what Pittsburgh does here, but I feel like there's uh, they got options as well. The Steelers. This is a team I really don't know anything about because why would I? Why would I watch them last year? 
Mm-hmm. Um, who 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 has the biggest Steeler vibe? Mm. Um, what you could do if you want to get real cute here. Um, Broderick Jones played right tackle in Pittsburgh last year. You could move him back to left tackle and take a Marius Mims here and reunite the Georgia the Georgia tackles. The Georgia or boys. you could take you could take JC Latham, have him play right tackle and have Broderick Jones come back to left tackle. You could take Troy Fautanu and have him play left tackle, just keep Broderick Jones at right tackle where he did play well. You could take Terry and Arnold and just run press coverage every single play and have Terry and Arnold and Joy Porter Jr. just beat the shit out of your wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. Oh, that, that sounds super Steeler. That does. Oh, fuck. You know, the more, the, yeah, saying that out loud, this might be Terry and Arnold. Let's go Terry and Arnold. Terry and Arnold at 20. Um, Dolphins. The Dolphins. The Dolphins. Uh, they signed Aaron Brewer, and for $6 million a year, you're assuming he's probably going to start at center, which is a shame because Jackson Powers Johnson did grow up a Dolphins fan, so I would love to take Jackson Powers Johnson here. But at the same time, like, okay, whatever, I guess. Um, it's a team that could use some interior offensive line help, though, regardless. And... Um, to me, at this point, that's probably Graham Barton. Mm-hmm. If I had to say anybody, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Graham Barton here. Graham Barton at 21 uh, he's got, overall. He's got enough flexibility to where Miami can play around with him. And, you know, if they want to play him at center, they can. I think he more, more, would more than likely start a guard for them. I do think – I don't love Aaron Brewer, obviously, as has been previously discussed, but I do think ultimately he is – He's a good fit for the scheme, at least, at center. So I think they keep him there, and I think Graham Barton slides in a guard somewhere. All right, Graham yeah, Barton. Just call, it is. call it what it is. All right. Now, Troy Fautano is still – this is a – he's going to go higher than this in real life. There's just no way he slides this far. But 22 overall, the Eagles. Let's see. Who is Brian Thomas Jr. is available? This could be. They need to me. They need secondary help. I would agree with you there. Is and, there? Um, let's see. Who's available? Kool Aid is the highest rated corner they have. If Kool Aid's Jones fracture isn't that big of an issue, which it might not be for some teams, like maybe they're fine with that. Maybe they take Kool Aid here. Um, I mean, we've seen the Eagles take like. Who was what was it Dean who had big injury concerns, but he fell to the third and they were they took him. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, the Kobe Dean, I think they took him like the back of the second or something. Um, but either way, like this is around this is around good value for Kool Aid anyway. I'm I'm gonna take him. If he, they need secondary help. He's the highest yeah. rated corner. Yeah. According to I PFF, so. let's go Kool Aid. All right. So now this is so this is the, the Chargers, Chargers again. They took Fuaga. Yes, Fuaga at eleven. Fuaga at eleven, and it sucks because all the best players available are offensive linemen. And oh my god, Fautanu, Latham, and Mims are all going to be gone by twenty three in real life. Like I, I firmly do believe that. Oh, probably yeah. Uh, now, granted, they took a lot of offensive linemen. They need a wide receiver. Brian Thomas Jr. is available. Um, this is he is your like wide a, receiver four? Um. Yeah, I probably have a slightly higher grade on him than I do A.D. Mitchell, just because I'm more confident that Bryant Thomas Jr. is going to be good, whereas there is a bust factor with A.D. Mitchell, and which isn't to say that I lean that way with him. I personally, I like, I think he's going to be a star. I don't lean but, that way. But yeah, to me, this is this is Bryant Thomas Jr. Just you're taking because you need somebody, right? Not to mention the speed with Justin Herbert's arm strength. Like, I think this is a good fit. Uh, for those two, I think that's going to be a lot of fun to watch if this see. happens. And yeah, I'd like, I like. And again, like, you're taking a much more like. Again, you don't have any wide receiver in the room besides Josh Palmer. You need a safer pick at wide receiver. Ad Mitchell is not the kind of wide receiver you take when you have nobody. Quinn that's the kind of wide receiver you take when you're the Kansas City Chiefs, or 
excuse me, you could, if you're Buffalo, maybe you take A.D. Mitchell. Um, but if you're the Chargers and you have nothing out there, yeah, take Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, I mean, take, it's worked out. The board you fell, know can run fast enough. The, Just get up there. The board fell pretty decently for him with having, you know, no other receivers outside of the top three get taken. Yeah. So let's go so Brian honestly, Thomas. Oh, there's a good chance Brian Thomas could be gone at this point. I think he will be. Well, if it gets to a point where we keep saying that for so many players, it's like, well, well this is just too good of a draft class. Yeah. Like, there are going to be guys that fall on. Like, there's going to be somebody like that we've taken already. There's going to be at least a couple of guys that are going to be falling out of the first round. So, like, Graham Barton might not go in round one. Like um, somebody falling to 24. Yeah. You could see, like, Troy Fautana. If you don't take Troy Fautana here, I'm going to kill you. There's three guys I'm looking at that I'm like, this is a vibe. There is an obvious left tackle here that that, that that is going to be a very good left tackle for a very long time. Do we need a left tackle? Miraculously, or yes. is Tyler Smith kicking out? Then, I firmly um, believe that's the entire reason we I drafted he, him was to replace think, Tyron Smith. Okay, I guess you're right. I guess but you did they tackle. factor in him becoming like all pro level at a guard, as a guard? Well, Probably did you also not. factor in Troy Fautanu could also be an all pro guard? Like, good Fautanu definitely has like the movement skills to play. I mean, he's, he's, he's a good enough mover to play tackle, but he could play guard. Like, is there were guys that before the combine wanted him to play guard, and then after the combine were like, no, he's a tackle. But, like, it's not like he can't. I don't know. So the three guys I'm I looking think... at, Fatanu, obviously. Jared okay. Verse is still there. He sure is. And I, I don't think you could ever have too many pass rushers, edge Never. rushers. Well – If Johnny Newton was still here, I would say that that'd be the obvious selection as well. And, just to beef up the interior some more. And then but. Jackson Powers Johnson. I mean, we don't have a center anymore. Tyler Biot has left us. I My argument as defense attorney for not taking Jared Verse here is that you know damn well your edge group is going to be just fine. We did lose some guys, some rotation you guys. You did. You did. That's, that's where I'm at. Like, you, yes, you've lost pieces, but the sky is not going to fall. Michael and Parsons is still on the football More team. Sam Williams snaps uh, is a good thing in my book. I agree. So, I agree. You I still think... have D-Law. You have, you have Micah. You have Sam Williams. You have at least three guys. Three guys is more than most teams can say. Most teams don't have even three guys. Dallas had like five last year. You really don't need four, especially not when you have other holes. You need a center. You're, it's 24. You're, you're, it's late enough in the first round where a center is not, like, laughable. And then – or you could take Fautano and just have an elite left side regardless of how that falls. That's what I'm leaning towards because if there was – I, if there is one thing I trust the Cowboys to do, it is put together a good offensive line. Yes. And if you take one of these two, I think either one's – I think either one good. we could do here, and then if – you know, I, I could see us hitting on a later pick in the draft to, to be in the offensive line. Yep. Mainly on the interior. <sighs> so if we take Okay, I'll go I'll go big Troy. Let's go big Troy. Okay. Okay. I, I will He's go gotta big, go somewhere. Big Troy. Packers. Green Bay. Is it too early to take Tyler Newbin? I don't necessarily think it is. Um, this could be... Joke, Lahoma? I beg your pardon? Joke, Lahoma? What, what, the, what about Joke, Lahoma? Didn't you say Tyler? Tyler Newbin, not Tyler Guyton. Oh, I didn't hear Newbin. Um, this is too early for Tyler Guyton, to be honest with you. I, I wouldn't take Guyton here, especially not when Latham and Mims are both still on the board. I wouldn't take, I wouldn't even sniff Guyton. Um, I would not hate Tyler Newbin here at all to Green Bay. Like I might just oh, fuck the Jared Verse slide is looking disastrous. But to, how much how much edge help does Green Bay really need? You can never have too much. Fuck. And you know, at this point, it, it might just be like Green Bay is kind of playing with house money. 
mm-hmm. after the season they had last. Fuck it. Jared Verse. Jared Verse. Jared Verse, you are a Green Bay Packer. They could always go safety in round two. In fact, they probably will. Yeah. It's just kind of how it goes. Safety in the first round? Yeah, Newbin might not be good enough. I'll take him that high. That's okay. Okay. Bucks. Bucks. You got a lot of holes, man. You could. In fact, with the retirement of Ryan Jensen, it's probably Jackson Powers Johnson time. I think the fall has gone on long. Yeah. That's just my, my two cents on the matter. You're probably right. If Verse was still here, you'd probably take Verse. But with we'll him go. being gone, we'll go JPJ. you resign. You resign Baker. You want to protect him. Go get Jackson Powers Johnson. You kept Mike Evans. Mm-hmm. We'll go Jackson Powers. That leaves us Arizona. With... Yeah. Now this is another team that could use some offensive line help, at least on the interior. It is definitely too early to draft Zach Frazier. However, J.C. Latham is still available. And again, there are plenty of people who think J.C. Latham should be playing guard. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think at this point, this is a team that could use some some interior offensive line help. Let's go with J.C. Latham. You're 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 taking best player available. You're taking a position of need. I think this is fair. I have a dream fit for 28, by the way. I okay. Like... Well, I don't know skill sets. I'll probably just go A.D. Mitchell. Because I just know they need a wide receiver. My dream fit here would be Lab McConkey. However, I would not complain about A.D. Mitchell whatsoever. What about McConkey makes you makes him a dream fit? Just a corked up white boy goaded with the speed. With Josh That's just feel like Josh Allen would like – I, I know Josh Allen would love A.D. Mitchell, and honestly, like, there's there's a world where I would like I would really hate for Kansas City to get A.D. Mitchell because like of all the teams where you're like, okay, he's a boomer bust receiver. Oh, he went to the Chiefs. Well, never mind. He's 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 a boom. Like there it is. So I mean, we've seen I mean we've seen Kadarius Tony flop in Kansas City. Well, he flopped in New York too. In all fairness, but, yeah, um, he was a flop before he got there, so that doesn't really count. Two times Super Bowl champion. This could be this could be a Marius Mims at this point too. But I mean, but I think, especially with how deep the receiver class is, you don't need to take one right now. You could take one in round two and still get a very good one. But, but they're going to take the tackle, one. The tackle class is also very deep though, so it's not like you need to take. I'm drafting AD tackle right now. Okay, good enough for me. Detroit, the Lions. Um. Yeah, um, not a lot of great options here left if you're the Lions, unfortunately. Not a ton of options. Uh, in terms of the guys that you really wanted, there are not a whole lot left. If excuse me, if A.D. Mitchell was still available, honestly, I would consider it. Um, given that cause like, I think McConkie's a bit redundant with what they already have in Detroit. And... I don't see, in terms of needs for them, I don't know that I see another team like, or I don't, I don't know that I see a guy available that like really would be worth it. Could maybe, hmm, I could see Jordan Morgan tackle out of Arizona, except he would not be playing tackle. He would be playing guard. Um, this could be a Chop Robinson pick. This could be Chris Braswell. This could be TJ Tampa. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Jordan Morgan, and uh, he's gonna play guard for them. He's the Jonah Jackson replacement. Jordan Morgan, Arizona. Okay, Baltimore seems like an easy one for me especially with how this player has no business still being on the board. Uh, they just traded Morgan Moses. I don't know about you. This one's obvious. Who's Morgan Moses? The right tackle. Oh, okay. They just traded to the Jets. Uh, then, yeah, we'll just go We'll just go Mimmies. Yeah. Uh, the slide stops here. Mims has no business. Although I do there. think they need a wide receiver, but... I would agree with you, but I think O-line is a bigger need for them, and I think 
again with the with the depth this receiver class has, like you could there's not a wide receiver award. I mean, you, they could take Lad McConkey, especially Todd Mon- shit. Todd Munkin's the offensive coordinator in Arizona or in, in Baltimore. <laughs> Look, McConkey would have been perfect. Actually. Too late. Uh, yeah, too late. They're but, already Mims. That would that would have been fine. It, well, I think I think Mims is the better pick, but yeah, I wouldn't have hated McConkey there. All right, your um, San Francisco 49ers. My yeah, I'm a 49ers known 49ers fan. Jacob Pavilion. Um, what does this up. team actually need? Um, Offensive Brandon Ayuk contract extension, but um, this could be Tyler Guyton right here. In fact, I probably will go Tyler Guyton okay. in the event that that. Um, in the event that Brandon Ayuk is traded before draft night, which I don't think is going to happen, I do think eventually they work out an extension. Excuse me. Um, this could be Lad McConkey. The McConkster. I, I think McConkey could even play a somewhat similar role to what I. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they're like there's like a ridiculous. What did he uh, run? A four. It was, a, it was in the four threes. I think it was like it was four, a low three, four nine, three nine, right? I thought it was lower than that, like a, like a low four three, but I could be wrong. Yeah, he definitely ran in the four threes though. Like McConkey's a speed demon, um, and he's an incredible route runner. He's one of the best route. There's not this is not a four three draft nine. Class. Okay, you're right. Um, it's not a great draft class for route runners, but um, in general, there are uh, like like he he's he's a, he's a great route runner, like regardless of of like. Not even just comparing him to the rest of the draft class. Like on his own, he's a phenomenal route runner. Uh, McConkey is. But I mean, he's who, a white wide receiver, but he's got to be. Yeah, this is a Tyler Guyton though. Tyler, this is Tyler Guyton. Guyton. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Tyler Guyton. And just try to plug him in somewhere. Kansas City. This could be. You could go. No, Lad McConkey. You could go. Excuse me. You could go. Where do they have this play? Do they have, where do they have Xavier Worthy ranked? Uh, 68 overall. What the fuck? All the way down there below Jalen McMillan. That's an interesting one. I, I mean, if you look at the overall ranks, it looks like they don't actually have too much separation between receivers. No, not necessarily. There's, I mean, there's like, I guess there's like a quick tear off, but... <laughs> I'm Chief doing... the world and take Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver out of Rice. <laughs> How far down is he? The one seventy. Oh yeah. Or uh, one eighty. One eighty one. Yeah. One seventy is his ADP. No. Uh, you could go um, Lad McConkey. You could go. I think Andy Reid saw this player run his forty time and go, oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, that boy can move. That boy can move. Very fast. Very very fast. And I think this player could track the ball. You know, I don't think this is—I don't think this is going to be a John Ross where we just see a dude run fast mm-hmm. and then not do anything else. I agree. I think this is a player. I'm going Xavier Worthy. I don't hate this in the slightest. I think this is the finally they get their Tyree Kill replacement. I, as soon as um, they saw him run that forty, everyone went, "Oh, don't let Kansas City get that man." And Kansas City's going to get that man. Kansas City's getting that man. Um, you could see Ain't Kansas no City love and Buffalo swap receivers shoo-wop, here shoo-wop. as well. Ain't no love of my man. Shoo-wop, shoo-wop. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, this was an interesting, an interesting mock. Yeah, for sure. Who would have thought Caleb Williams won overall? Oh man, who would have thunk? Hey, uh, Mike is moving up for a quarterback. Never seen that one before. Tennessee Joe Alt. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Well, the Cowboys drafted an offensive lineman in the first round, so go ahead and start fitting that man for his gold jacket. Yep, it's over. Like I said, man, if there's one thing I trust that team doing, it is putting together an offensive line. Especially uh, guys with tackle and guard flexibility uh, in the twenty in the mid twenties. Yeah, yep. that is that's the mock, ladies and gentlemen. That was it. That was fun. Very fun. I had a very good time. I had a great time. All right. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, guys, I went to Barnes & Noble, got some things for the pod. 
those being debatable, where it's just it'll it'll ask us pretty much uh, which would you prefer almost, and we'll 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 answer, and then a um, let's get deep with just some question cards, Double icebreaker, edition. deep and deeper. I think let's we'll start off with debatable. I think they're double sided, so we'll just do yeah. both seat both of them on here. Yeah. Better Definitely. feeling. Better feeling. Making new plans or canceling them later. I, I know it's gonna be flipped, but see I hate when both of these things happen to me, <laughs> so I tend not to try to do them to other people. Um Canceling them later is probably the better feeling of them. Really? Too, if I had to be honest with you. Um, look, because if I wake up and I'm like, yeah, I can't do it today. And I have no shame in that, generally speaking. Okay. I think also it's double sided and it's just the same one on both sides. Oh, okay. But better feeling. This is this is tough. I am going to go with making new plans though. Okay. The canceling, I just feel like that's too that 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 has um too wide a variety of like how you could feel about it depending on yeah. the circumstances. So I think I'm going to play it safer making new plans. That's fair. Let's just let's see. Let's do one more. Okay. All right. This All I don't right. know who made this. All right. If they're a loser, if they thought this mm. was debatable, mm. they're a hater. If they thought this was debatable, mm -hmm. watching golf on television versus watching some paint dry. Is that actually what it is? That is dead. I mean, it's going to be flipped, but this is that's dead ass what it says. It's not flipped. It's 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 the perfect. It's like how it should be. Oh, you can um, read it. Yeah, well, well we should. It should be. It's golf on television. I mean, I'd rather watch golf. Like, it don't say how long, but I. I mean, nobody would actually rather watch paint dry than. This is, yeah, this is a dumb right? fucking question. Yeah, <laughs> we can do one more. That one's fun. Watch a golf on television. All right, here we go. Yeah, one more. One more. Golf. Especially if it's Will Levis at the uh, the second annual NFL PA like pro am or whatever. Like, hell yeah, let's do it. We can, this might this might cause this we could see a little conversation here with this one. Okay. Okay. Underappreciated invention. Indoor bathroom. Mm -hmm. Or household fridge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go I'm going to go mine. indoor. I'm going to go indoor bathroom. I'm going to go I'm going to go household fridge. My argument as a defense attorney for indoor bathroom is that you know damn well when you were out and about, mm. right, you're exposed, you are, you are open to danger. What are you doing? Sorry. I didn't really <laughs> think of that. <laughs> I know. I, I now that I think about it, I remember oh I pretty God. much ruined one podcast episode's audio because the whole time I was playing with this spring here, and it was making a terrible noise over the mic. So one of the episodes that is up, all you hear is for like most of the pod. That's all you hear. <laughs> that's like, that's crazy because I didn't. I've never heard that until this episode. I've never heard you do that before, but I've heard it a few times now. Hell yeah. yeah. It's a... Um. Any where was? Oh yeah. And then even like I consider indoor indoor bathroom like indoor indoor like I don't include outhouses as part of this because if you go in that outhouse that shit is humid and uh -huh. hot and wet and you feel like a swampy ass animal while you're trying to take a shit like there is no greater feeling than being comfortable and sitting down the toilet for 15 minutes longer than you have to because you're just you're just cool in your own little space like cool that's where i'm at okay makes sense so i'm going household fridge mm -hmm. i just I'm, I'm thinking of all the foods i eat that's in there mm -hmm. and like how 
less frequently we have to buy groceries because we have proper storage for certain yeah. things in there. Because you would have to pretty much be buying like groceries to buy to cook like same day frequently. Yeah. Um, and you know most of my bathroom time is pissing. I I mean I shit once a day. But I'm pissing way more, and as a guy, that's easily adjustable to be doing outside. Fair enough. Shitting outside would be a huge adjustment. I've done it, but yeah, no fun. I think handheld portable bidets would be a very common thing if this was the case. Got to refill that shit often, but yeah, I I hear you. Yeah, but you just got to fill it up with water. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would hope you're not using anything else. <laughs> All right, guys. Today I will be using Sprite to clean my fuel, asshole. <laughs> jet fuel bidet. Uh, I'll be cleaning my ass with uh, my ass. I'll be cleaning my ass with her discharge. Now, uh, <laughs> like, what the hell else would you use? Yeah, so it's water. Uh. It's water. <laughs> but- all right, guys. Bidaying myself with my boyfriend's cum. Let's go. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's get deep, guys. Let's fucking so, do it. Three stacks of cards, three categories. Icebreaker, deep, deeper. Do we want to do one of each? We'll do one of each. Let's 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 go the order that you probably should. We'll do icebreaker, deep, icebreaker. deep. Deep, deep. Icebreaker. Pretty simple one. And I think we might have had this conversation kind of already on the pod. I think we did a top three of these. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite holiday? We did do a top three. It's Christmas. It is also Christmas for me. My 25 days of Christmas movies, pretty well documented. It's a staple. I'll be doing that shit. I love the Christmas spirit. I enjoy all aspects of Christmas. Everything that Christmas is about, your boy loves. Christmas movies, making Christmas cookies, Christmas feasts with the family, going to see Christmas Christmas lights, Mm -hmm. hot chocolate while watching one of them Christmas movies, hits, opening presents. I get that, you know, maybe we don't need to be as materialistic, but who doesn't love opening up a present? Who doesn't love giving somebody a present to open up? Let me tell you something. For sure. Christmas on top. Undefeated. Seems Never like, lost. Seems like we're in agreement. So let's get let's get deep here. Let's get deep. I, I just have a feeling that this let's is gonna penetrate. be done. Uh yeah, maybe. No, we'll see. <clears throat> What's something you appreciate about your life right now that you may not have? 10 years from now oh that you may not have right now okay what's something you appreciate about your life right now that you may not have 10 years from now um great question i might have to look up the lifespan of labs i was just gonna i I didn't want to say it out loud but i was thinking like uh Dirk, yeah, <laughs> would probably be. We should probably be your answer. Dirk is about uh, four. Well, because the first thing I thought about was Bowie, and I'm like, Bowie's gonna live till he's like twenty. Like, I'm gonna have Bowie's not even one year old yet. I'm gonna have Bowie in, in ten years. But Dirk, I don't know. Oh, ten uh, to twelve years. It says so. That's I didn't want to be the one. I'm glad you brought it up before I could. Because it came I, to my mind immediately. It. I was thinking it, yes. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad it'll, it is probably about. Dirk. Which, speaking of yeah. Christmas, like we said, Dirk has his own dedicated Dirk mystery. Dirk mystery. Actually, yes, I sir. gotta buy a new one. Oh. Just because it's it's too small. I, I add oh. like, I I try to add like at least one frame a year. I, I'm Actually, out of room. Uh, this apartment it's my first ever time living on my own, and uh, realistically, I will not be living here ten years from now. So, I appreciate it, but I'm not gonna be living here ten years from now. Hopefully, I'll be living in a better place by then. Although the oldest lab lived to 27. Ooh, Dirk's going. Dirk's going to get it. Yeah, it'll hope I mean hopefully Dirk will still be here 10 years from now. <sighs> you know, I walk him daily. He gets love. Uh 
as he just lays under the bed. He's good though. Yeah. All right. So you're going apartment. I'm going Dirk. Bowie's still in the same spot he was when we started the pod, by the way. So it's good to know he's getting plenty of rest. Oh, uh, be very healthy. But okay. now, mm-hmm. let's get deeper. Let's penetrate even further. Let's see. I kind of want to do a different one. This one's kind of like not that. It's not. It, it's, it didn't hit deeper. It kind of disappointed. Okay. Uh, have you ever done drugs? Which ones? Yeah. This I feels mean, disappointing. I've smoked. Before. Yeah, same. It's not, not my favorite. I've done Adderall once. Um, and it, it's not even really a drug. I have ADHD. I like. I would be prescribed Adderall yeah. if I like went to go talk. Like, I have been diagnosed. If I had just actually like gone through with the whole rest of the process, like I'd be, it would be a prescription for me anyway. So yeah. And that one doesn't even count. Yeah, so. I've I've done I've done the weed. I've done the I've weed done a handful of times. Pin joint my, and bong. My favorite. I've done all of the above. Yeah, threw up first time I did a bong. Interesting. Oh, I, a bong almost made me throw up. Once. It it because I hit it one. It was my birthday. I hit it once, and then because my be, my my friend Richard was like, "Let me record it. Let me record it." I hit it, and he's like, "Oh shit! I didn't record it. Do it again." And usually when I when I when I especially at that point when I, anytime I've done anything with weed it, I usually am like barely feeling anything, mm-hmm. so I was like let me go hard on this next one, mm-hmm. and I did. And I shouldn't have. I threw up. Yeah, that'll be greened out. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, let's yeah. let's run it back with a deeper one just because that one yeah. was. I agree. That was. I mean, the only way that would get deep, I don't, I don't even know. It's like ayahuasca. It's not even the first time. It's not even the first time we've talked about drugs on this before. Like, I think we both talked about like weed in the past. Probably. Yeah, I'm sure it's came up at some point. I think we might just have to accept the deeper questions. Maybe not be too deep. Yeah. This this We're last one that we'll do. Like. What is a moment you get nostalgic about? Why? My first Titans game. First, first Titans game. Titan. And it was cold as shit. Uh, I was, uh, it was like, it was like seven degrees or some shit. We lost like ten to three, and it was. I, I did damn near froze my toes off. I had some hot chocolate. I had this super big blanket. My dad took a bunch of pictures, so I've got pictures of this event. Um, yeah, not not my finest hour. Certainly, we lost, and it was cold as a bitch. The only good thing about that game was we had hot chocolate. I'm trying to think about moments I get nostalgic about. Damn, like, like that, like, when I think about nostalgia, I'm like, overall, like, it's like it's it's usually over across a time span, right? Or it's like this person, but it like yeah. a specific moment you're nostalgic about. I'll go with um. Damn. Let's go with bus loop talk before we're getting on the bus at Brennan. Oh my fucking god. Let's yes, go with some bus sir. loop talk. Bus loop ball that talk. Is where me and Jakob here became friends. That's where, that's where I dropped the greatest take I will ever drop. I am never going to now. I'm never going to beat my Patrick Mahomes sophomore MVP prediction. That is never getting topped by anything ever. That is, <laughs> oh, yeah. That yeah. was I was because we would every day we'd be like bold prediction. Yeah, and then us. Yeah, one day definitely I was showed us up and, and not that just was, Shout out to Nate. Shout out to Nate Shout Dog. Out Nate Dog. Uh, Esai would be there. Cause I yep. cause he because that's who I rode the bus with. Yep. Shout out. Shout out the whole gang. So um yeah, the bus loop ball. Dude, I hadn't talk. talked to Esai for years and then I after the Cowboys lost in the playoffs this last season, I randomly texted him. <laughs> I was, I was like, taking it. God damn it. <laughs> I don't really remember what he said. I have to check. But yeah. Uh, that'll do it for let's get deep unless you wanted to do another round uh, we can always do more next week yeah we can come back to these yeah, save some of these cards for, for later I right? mean we have 
a lot. Plenty of cards. This is yeah. one stack. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Top. What do we even? What do we, we? What did we pick for top? Three? We did not. We did not pick one. Yeah, I had a feeling we, we did didn't. Not, we, we didn't know. Well, I didn't want to interrupt because once you, yeah, I remember during the intro, I'm like, no, we didn't. We didn't actually settle on this. Yeah. Um. Um, top three Europeans in the NBA. <laughs> We're going to have the same top three, just maybe a different order. Luka, Jokic, Giannis, yep. to, some, to some degree. That's my order. Uh, and if it was top three white boys, you just take out Giannis and put in, like... Sabonis. Yeah, uh... Man, he's a little maybe. overrated, but it, it for white boys, who was better? I don't know. Chet's got more aura than Sabonis. Chet do be like, having more aura. Sure. Yeah, like I, well, I've already spoiled the top three. Don't Josh Giddy, <laughs> just just joking. Uh, yep. Tuesday, Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> um, shit. Yeah, What's I don't know. Is? I don't got it. I don't got it. Um. Damn. Oh, yo. Okay, hang on. Top three seasons. <laughs> Did we even? I think that's a joke we've made before, but I don't know if we've ever actually done it. Let's fucking do it. All right. Let's let's lock that shit. In. Now, disclaimer. I love all four, so whichever one does not make my top three, Same. consider it an honorable mention because I have love. For all of Earth's splendors, okay, I enjoy it in all of its forms and all of its uh, every everything that it takes. All right, but don't list the honorable mention. No, no, y'all will have to know what it is by a process of elimination. Yeah. Sorry about that. But winter, spring, summer, fall, it don't matter. I love them all. Bars, let's get it. So, top three of the week. seasons what there's only four we know we know we're aware one of them's gonna get folded put on a t-shirt it is what it is air the whole block out if you must but one of them's not gonna make it well all four of them will probably get mentioned chances are my number four is not the same as your number four we'll find out baby we'll find out i think i got my three in order already i'm really having a hard time eliminating one to be honest with you. I got my number one. Um, actually, I have... Oh, fuck. I really hate leaving this one at number four. I think I have... Mm, yeah. Okay. I got it. All right. Cause you, you're going first, buddy. All right. Number three. Autumn mm. slash fall. I'm going to go ahead and jump Although, in then because that's my number three. Okay, I'm glad we're in agreement here. So we're the already... foliage goes hard. Um, the food goes hard. Um, you know, it's it's real pretty. Mm-hmm. It's real orange and shit. Um, For the, the weather, weather, it's not I love the extreme the I love heat the of summer. It's not the extreme cold of winter. Spoiler, that might play a factor in what my favorites are. It just may. I live in Texas. (laughs) I live in Florida. (laughs) Yeah. That's factoring Um, in. We experience seasons. I grew up in the South. That shit's factoring in. Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. Um, Now, um, since you did, you know, am I going to say my number two? Yeah, I guess we'll just go after number two because... Number two. Winter time. Okay, we got a different one. We got a different one. Now the reason number the winter is not number one for me, because really, winter would be number one if not for seasonal depression. Hits me every single winter, drags me down. It doesn't linger too long and it really doesn't doesn't affect me too too much, 
but it affects me enough to the point where it's not number one on my power rankings for that very reason. Um, as much as I love winter, that does it does it does damper it a little bit for me. However, with that being said, winter, you know, I I did grow up around snow. I love snow. Um, yeah, fucks with it good heavily. For you. Yeah. Hey, you've seen snow more recently than I have. I've seen. Okay, really? Yes, it snowed in San Antonio after I moved. <laughs> you think I'm seeing that shit down here? I ain't don't no know. Snow in, ain't no snow in Florida. Ain't, not, ain't nothing down here. But um, not in your part of Florida. Even in the Panhandle, they're not getting snow up there. Who knows? That ain't happening. It's been it's been a long time. You been up there? I don't. I don't ever want to be up there. I don't. I don't. I don't trust what goes on like the. The, the little strip of Oklahoma and then like the panhandle of Florida, I don't trust none of that. I don't trust none. Any any state that's got like a little bit of little, little something going on, I don't I don't trust it. The entirety of Rhode Island, don't. Trust I was about to say, dude, you hate most of New England. Yeah, I don't trust none of that. I'm sorry, don't trust it. Um, anywho, yeah, I'm, I I ain't never going to the panhandle if I can. I drive through it to get to Texas. That's it. Um, but yeah, winter. It's got it's got Christmas in it. It's got. It's got Thanksgiving in it. Um, it's got New Year's in it. It's got snow in it. But it's got seasonal depression in it. Number two. Lock it in. My number two. Your number two. You, f- you fall forward, right? You fall forward. Yes, sir. So what do you do in response? You spring back you up. You spring back yes spring back my number two is spring yes sir well, talk about the sequence we just had for a second hold on now that we were locked in we're like this we're like we're, you, you you run a podcast with somebody long enough you're in lockstep you spring back up let me see what episode you know, this is i haven't been titling mine in a while i've noticed <laughs> Yeah, I forgot one day I lost count. So, so this just, should be tw- this is twenty six because my last one was twenty four. Okay. okay, this is I'll start. I'll, I'll, I'll at some point go back because I was making the the uh, the playlist. Yeah, and I was like, God damn it, because you have to like search <laughs> it up. You don't just like I yeah. can't just go to your normal page. Oh, or like I can go to your page and add them in each manually. But I was like, in anyways, oh, okay. spring, spring. I already hit on it when I talked about weather previously. It's not too hot. Mm-hmm. Although, in Texas, it kind of is. It can be in it's San Antonio, well. but it's not too hot. It ain't too cold. Nature begins to come back out. Bloom. <laughs> we get the blooming here. Mm-hmm. Pretty flowers. Do be blooming. Uh, blue bonnets everywhere right here, right now. Oh, Lord have mercy. Blue everywhere. Grow like weeds. I remember I was told as a kid it's illegal to pick blue bonnets. That can't be right because they're fucking everywhere. I I I, I remember in elementary school there was like a in the, during the playground there was like a, there was a little patch, and I remember I picked one up, I I plucked it out, and everybody ran. I, I shit you not everybody ran. <laughs> ah! Oh my god, we're gonna get in trouble. Everybody ran. It's like you just opened the gates to oblivion, just picking up the damn blue bonnet. Yeah, you but you weren't uh, allowed to step on them either. What? You weren't allowed to step on them either. Oh, I don't remember that. that one. Thing. If you could help it, you weren't you weren't supposed to step on them. Makes sense. Don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with Texas, or you'll get a foot in your ass and uh, uh, that uh, something else maybe in your ass. Uh, anywho. Yeah, I I mean I don't know. To me. I don't know. I never view the seasons. I don't know. It's just like, oh, it's different. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So when it comes to listing reasons, I'm not going to have much because I just, it, it always kind of blends together for me. So your number one. I'm going to piggyback off of you. Yeah, I figured. Now, when winter, when winter time, the seasonal depression gets you down. Mm-hmm. What do you do when it gets you down? You pick yourself back up. You spring yourself up for you. You just spring yourself, but Peter. so the opposite of seasonal depression is the the seasonal joy that comes with spring. You see the greenery once again. There's more color in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the sun is out more. Mm-hmm. It starts to rain a bit more. You know, your boy loves the rain. All right, I I done grew up falling asleep to thunderstorms and shit, and that's the only white noise I can put on when I when I need noise to sleep. That's what I I lock that shit in every time it's thunderstorm. Hey, if you need white noise to fall asleep to, play this podcast. Put on this podcast, yes, sir. I have uh, both a friend and a girlfriend that put on this podcast to fall asleep. So shout out to both of you. Put that shit uh, on. Put that shit on. I appreciate you both. But with that being said, spring. Um, it's the opposite of uh, it's the opposite of what winter does to my mental health. It, it really does give me a nice boost. Um, you, you walk outside and you see the sunlight, and the sun don't go down until eight eight p.m. Mm. That's that's what it's all about, right? Because my ass ain't going to bed at eight p.m. Fuck, I look like I'm like eighty. I ain't going to bed that that early. You know what I mean? I got shit to do. So I don't know. I just love it, and. Uh, for the one season that didn't make it, the reason it's not here, it's too damn hot. It's too damn hot. That's, you know how we said that we probably too. wouldn't have the same number four? We have the same number four? We do. We apparently do have the exact same number four. And for the same reason, I take it. Because it's too yeah, damn hot. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's, especially it's, when, especially nobody, when you're not in school. Nobody the, wants to go outside in 103 degree weather and work at Lowe's for nine hours. The biggest I'm positive sorry. of summer gets taken away. When you're out of school. Yeah. So my number one is it's it's opposite month. Or it's opposite season. Mm. Excuse me. Excuse me. Winter. We actually almost had the same order because I was really debating spring and winter. I like, thought we I thought we, when we both said fall for our third, I thought we were. But so anyways, um the unnamed number four, he a bitch for real. Apparently. And, um yeah, winter and spring off top, basically. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, I mean, I, I just we, I went over it a lot. It's this is a heavily Christmas driven decision, for sure. I love Christmas. That's really what this comes down to above everything. Winter time and Christmas time really are the same thing. Like, can be interchangeable for the most and, part. And I don't be having, I don't really be having seasonal depression. That's fair. I just be coming well, in like, and out of it throughout the year. If I <laughs> if I didn't have seasonal depression, winter probably would be number one. Yeah. But to me, it's like, you know, people come together around Christmas time. There's a lot of fun activities to be doing around Christmas time. It might be the happiest I am. But, you know, it is the happiest I am all year. Fair enough. And we've talked about New Year's resolutions, how we think it's kind of dumb. Yes. But overall, it's a positive thing for a lot of people. Yeah. Ideally. The idea, at least, is good. So It's well-intentioned, you know. Yeah. It's fun. But uh maybe one maybe maybe one winter I'll have a Valentine's and we could re- I could really be enjoying everything that winter has to offer. Mm-hmm. A New Year's kiss? That's not looking no. Never had that either. It's not looking likely. Hey, and I'm gonna fly out just to give you a New Year's kiss. I mean, I'll just I'll just you know, I'll just drive up and see Gabe. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll work too, I guess. Whatever. But um yeah, that, that, I must do it for the top three. That's so, the top uh, three. fuck you, summer. You're too damn hot. Apparently, and um, yeah, that's all. That's all I got to say on that front. Yeah, I love summer, but it's too damn hot. You grow up in uh, Florida and uh, Texas and uh, Tennessee, yeah, and live in you, the get real, you get real tired of seeing the, the triple the triple digits. <laughs> you get real sick of seeing it. So. What we got? What we're on? What we've been on? What we've been on? Kick us off. Um, ain't been uh, ain't been too much for me actually. Just that watching that new Invincible. Uh, I've not seen the new episode that came out this this past week yet. So I gotta watch that one because it did end on a bit of a cliffhanger previous week. I know you. I'm sorry about the look you giving me. I wish we could have talked about. I was gonna say it's funny because last week I hadn't seen the episode. Yep. Now this week I'm caught up. And I haven't. Jacob's seen it behind. Yet. Um, it's a I, gotta, I gotta get my girlfriend caught up because she hasn't seen any of season two yet. Damn. So I want to get her. I want to watch it with her. She wants to watch. I don't want to like get get any further ahead. Um, she wants to watch it, so I don't want to get any further ahead without like, oh, um, you know, without without getting her caught up to speed too. So get her caught up. But yeah, 
Yeah, no, it don't happen. She pops happen. off this weekend. Maybe we'll see. Um, what else? I've been listening to music. If you can believe Shocking. it. Shocking. Nothing new though. I haven't put on any new music yet. Um, there hasn't been. There's been a couple of albums actually that came out like last Friday that I've, that I've wanted to listen to. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, what have I been listening to? I've just been listening to my playlist, like the shit I already got on. I've just been putting it on some more. So uh, shout out Elliot Smith. It's been a lot of what I'm listening to. Yeah. I don't got a whole lot for this segment, to be honest with you. I really haven't been doing much. I mean, I've been I've been hanging out with my girlfriend. I met some of her family the past weekend. I met her nieces and nephews. This doesn't need I to be a flex show. Uh, all right. Not bad. <laughs> uh, I'm doing karaoke tomorrow. So, been on that. Yeah. Oof. That's about it. Solid. Yes, sir. I rewatched a masterpiece. Masterpiece. I rewatched my favorite movie of all time. Because I saw that apparently it's be sitting around a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. Lord have mercy. What are we talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't remember, because I we did talk about the top three here. If you hadn't seen that episode or you don't remember, my favorite movie of all time is Brother Bear. I'm I like, did see that you rewatched it. I did. I posted on my story. I was like, damn, that brother is a bear. That brother is a bear. And then when Kenai is telling Code about how he killed his mother, I was like, yo, this is a, this is the saddest scene ever. But yeah, rewatched it, and I was like, nah, this is still a really fucking good movie. I don't know why this is sitting at 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. Tragic. They're like, oh, they, a predictable ending. It's like, really? No shit. It's a Disney movie. It's a happy ending. <sighs> yes. Things worked out. I don't know that I've ever seen Brother Bear start to finish. Maybe I did once when I was really young. But Damn. That look you give me. That's something. What? Something disastrous. All right, sorry. I'll get to it. Hey, eventually. Watch it with your girl. It'll probably be a great movie to watch with a lady friend. I'll I'll, I'll let her know. Cuddle up, feeling all the hey, emotions of Brother Bear. She's watching this, so hey, if you're listening, watch, watch Brother, Brother Bear. Bear. Let's do it. So, um, cool. another cool. one of the books I got. I got two other things from Barnes and Noble when I got that positive planner. I got a book called The mm-hmm. Urge: History of Addiction. Just reading through it, I because I'd be stroking my thing a little too much. I'm like, yeah, but this is a problem. Let me just research on addiction a little bit. Let me see if I can mm-hmm. stop. Is that what you're doing right now with your arm? No, it's Dirk's right here. Yeah, yeah, I figured as much. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know you had the extendo. You had the Drake schlong on you. But you, you had to reach all the <laughs> way over here to get to get Shit, to. Shit, Drake wishes yeah. he had what I got. Oh Lord, have mercy. God damn. Although maybe Drake had the extendo. He definitely he was wearing a sleeve or something, man. There's no way. Hey, no, I didn't there see it. There's no way. Didn't he had see the it. Length. No one ever want to see it. I'm sorry, man. The length that brother has is uh, is astounding. But hey, uh, I think Kendrick is about to be shaving a couple inches off that boy. I agree. Start the big three. It's the big me. It's the big meat. Is what it really is. You know Kendrick Packing. Oh, he's got to be. He's tall where he's only five foot seven. I think he's tall where it counts. You know he's tall where it counts. Yeah, yeah. Five seven, stand on my dick. Now I'm six six. <laughs> Whatever, Lil Uzi said. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, you know Kendrick got it all. I know he do. Um. I think that's it. You know who apparently NFL players that got it on him? Apparently Amir Abdul is packing like eleven inches. From what I've been told, there is such thing Amir as too Ab- much. Amir Abdullah might have like the biggest dick in the league. From what I I I, I have a legitimate source on this. I shit you not. Do, do you I know somebody like, who fucked him? No, I know it's locker rooms, man. Guys be getting naked all the time. It's just ball players, man. Like I have I have a friend whose dad is an agent. I have I have heard through the grapevine that apparently, from what I've been told. Take this how you will. You can take for you, or take it as long as you will. Um, Amir Abdul is packing about eleven inches, which is supposedly the longest in the league. Flaccid? Now there are some. No, hard. 
11 flaccid's got to be like What's he doing like, hard in the locker room? <sighs> Look, I don't know. Did you man. ask if Maybe. it was hard or not? Look, bro. <laughs> All I know is Amir Abdullah's got 11. Because 11 hard, that, that's got a shadow. Uh, what do you call it? If it's 11 flaccid, it's got to be like 16 hard, which has to break all types well, of records. Maybe he's just a shower, and it just it, – it just, maybe it doesn't get bigger. It just well, like – Well, he's definitely a shower no matter girthier. how – no matter how, what size it is. But I, I, I don't know how shower Abdullah, Amir Abdullah's packing. That's you know what, Amir Abdullah, Abdullah, come Abdullah on the pod Abdullah. and show us your cock. Yeah, Amir Abdullah, if you want, yeah, cock reveal. Cock reveal <laughs> this on can the most get, obscure can podcast you could possibly come on. Can we get a confirmation that Amir Abdullah is like just hung like a Clydesdale? Can we get a? Um, can we get? Can we get proof? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Here, just but. show us. We'll, we'll have like I'll have a screen separate. We'll see it. We won't be on on screen here, and we'll be like, oh, he's really packing eleven. He got it on him. Or, oh, he's only got nine. Oh, I feel, I feel like even if he was packing, like, nine, I'd be like, yeah, nice cock. Like, oh, for sure. <laughs> Obviously. I was just joking about nine being disappointed. <laughs> I'd okay. be like, hey, bro. Fucking, what you doing after this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. But I think that's going to end it here. Dirk is freaking out. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to end it with uh, Mira Abdullah's cock. Yeah, what that's a way to end the pod. Incredible. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for okay. watching. As always, the next one will be over on Avillion Talks, so check that out. Um, What's up? That's going to do it for this one, I think. Well, let me – quick quick update here. Quick update. We're sitting at 439 subs. We're climbing. Your end of the year goal was 500. Correct. It's March. Correct. It's March 26th. <laughs> yes. I think I think you'll do just fine. Also, update for that that slushy magic video, because when I first was on the pod, I was disappointed by its performance. It caught sec it caught a second life. Okay. It's now it's now at like three hundred and ten views, which is a lot for me. Okay. Like seventeen likes, it got me three subs. It it it, it ended up doing pretty well. It did it did, it did its job. Caught that second work. wind, but um yeah, but go ahead and like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for Peace. watching. And as always, keep gaming.